Welcome back everybody, the second of a series of presentations on the topic of gender. I actually love this topic, I find it so fascinating and we're in a part of human history which I find also quite fascinating. We're talking about the history of feminism. In my last video we started off thinking about first wave feminism, the fight for women's rights back in the Victorian period. I'm moving on now in a minute I'm going to jump to the 1960s. My title here is really interesting. This is actually a quote but I've broken the sentence off in the middle. The quote starts, one is not born a woman. How does it finish? How does it finish? Scratch your heads, think about that. Of course I'll return to that quote later on and also the author of that quote. So part two, continuing our history of feminism. And we talked about first wave last time, we have to talk about second wave this time, second wave feminism. In terms of timing, we're talking about from the 1960s onwards. You remember me saying that the first wave of feminism kind of petered out, became quiet after the women's campaign for women's rights had such great effect. So by the 1920s, women had picked up political and civil rights equal to that of men. And because of that, there was a period of quietness and the, the feminist movement created more energy, certainly in the Anglo-Saxon countries from the 1960s onwards. Key works of a cover pictured here, Betty Friedan's Feminine Mystique uh, from 1963. And um, this would be very characteristic of this second wave feminism, but another really important book, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, is from the late 1940s, look at that. So Simone de Beauvoir's Second Sex, we can see as a kind of proto second wave feminist work, a kind of seminal early work there. Both were interested in how women had historically been disenfranchised. I think I need to explain that word actually if you're a non-native speaker. If I'm being disenfranchised, somebody's taking my rights away from me. So losing your rights, being withheld your rights, you're being disenfranchised. So women historically have been disenfranchised, they've been disempowered, they've been marginalized, pushed to the margin of society. For me, when I think of second wave feminism, two words come to mind, women's lib, women's lib. Native speakers often shorten it, women's liberation, you can say, or in full, the women's liberation movement. It's about activism, it's about political activism. Of course, the 1960s were a wonderfully rich time for the social movements. We can talk about women's liberation here parallel to the American civil rights movement, for example, the disability rights movement, the, the early gay rights movement, very exciting movements in this period of rapid social change. So it's about activism, it's about campaigning, it's about demonstrations. These activists carried out, oh, here's a lovely word, note this, consciousness raising. If you don't know that word, pause here and look it up. It's a really, really beautiful word, a word social workers like me just love to use. Good, good. So The Second Sex, this book by Simone de Beauvoir, she was a French author, a French philosopher. She also wrote uh, novels as well as uh, thoughts about feminist ideas and political work, so really broad in her, uh, in her skills and her abilities as a, as a writer, dip into her work. Her most famous quote is the one that I started earlier on, one is not born a woman but becomes a woman. One is not born a woman but becomes a woman. Note um, it's quite difficult to translate, you might see variant translations of that because the original's in the French. So there you are, pause here, natter with your, your partner. How do you interpret this famous line? I want to uh, show you some of de Beauvoir's ideas. Um, although she was a, a big public figure in France, she was a little bit media shy early on in her life. And the interview I've got is quite later in her life. Uh, it's from a, a TV show with a lovely title, look at that, Why I'm a Feminist. So this is from 1975, and the whole thing is something like 50 minutes long. You can watch it all, but right now I'd invite you to watch something like the first 10 minutes or so. So find the video, watch the first 10 minutes or so. Stop after she talks about breastfeeding and toddler differences. That's when you 
Ludo, you're into 10 minutes. I, I think the version I've uploaded, uh, I've linked to here is um, a version which is in French but with English subtitles. When you, uh, when you watch it, after you watch it, which of de Beauvoir's ideas here do you find the most interesting? Which of her stories, which of her ideas stays most in your head? So there you are, check that out. I think it's really, really interesting. You might even want to watch the whole thing after the lessons are over. Good, good. So I'm presenting uh, de Beauvoir's ideas to you as an example of this second wave feminism. But now we're moving on. I've promised three different waves of feminism. So our third wave must be coming, right? Moving on. Third wave feminism, distinct, quite separate from second wave feminism in interesting ways. Um, the best person to talk about this maybe is Nomi Wolf. She was a celebrated uh, early author of third wave feminist thinking. Um, her big book, which was her breakthrough, was called The Beauty Myth in 1991. There's a lovely interview with her. She's briefly describing for her what characterizes third wave feminism. And although she says it in a very, very sketchy, brief way, um, it gives you quite an insight. It really is summarizing many of the main points. So watch that video, then watch the whole thing. The whole thing is something like five minutes. Only watch the first two and a half minutes. Watch it a couple of times, really jot down, note down all that she says. It really is quite fascinating. The point here is what are the characteristics of third wave feminism, the characteristics of third wave feminists? You know, how are they? What are they like? Make notes, compare with your partner pause here. So what did you jot down? I mean, it is worth noting, sometimes we may struggle to differentiate between the second and the third wave uh, of feminists. Um, the difference is not so clear as, say, between the first wave and the second wave. You know, that would be much more distinct. So it's a little bit harder. And the trough, the quiet period between these waves is not so clear. It wasn't so quiet between. One difference that we can immediately identify is generational. There's something like uh, a cohort generation between these people. You know, these are quite literally the children of the previous generation. There's something like 25 years between them. And with that comes a part acceptance, but a part rejection of earlier ideas. Wolf's comments then are really, really interesting. She says that third wave feminism is much more plural. Okay, so expect more diversity in their views. It's much less dogmatic. You know, if you're a third wave feminist, you don't have to be like this. You know, there's so much diversity there that we can afford to be less dogmatic. And um, third wave feminists are much more aware of issues of class and race. And again, that's really descriptive. You know, you've got great opportunities for intersectionality approaches here. She also notes third wave feminists are much more comfortable using the media. And this is a nice idea to hold on to. I'm going to demonstrate this in our next video. Lovely. So let's come to a close for now. Thanks for your interest. Thanks for watching.